Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. The story of Holy Week is epic. The movement from palms and hosannas to Jesus' table turning time in the temple, to his final parables, to the Last Supper, to the agony he goes through experiencing in the prayer of the Garden of Gethsemane, and then to the time of trial, finally to the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. It is an epic story. In our 2,000-year-old story, with a cast of thousands and epoch-making new beginnings in the resurrection of Jesus on Easter morning, we have smaller stories at work as well. In the midst of all this, there is one woman who embodies the essence of this story like none other. She is nameless. She appears on the fourth day of Holy Week with a jar of anointing oil and a heart of compassion for Jesus. She is there to focus on Jesus. She is there to care for him and to share extravagant love for him. This no-name woman is the one person pointing to his presence as God's chosen Messiah. This no-name woman is there for Jesus. In spite of her anonymity, there is absolutely nothing subtle or secret about the scene in which she appears in Mark's Gospel. The woman approaches Jesus carrying the type of fragile stone jar used to preserve precious imported perfumes. Everyone can see that she is bearing a luxurious gift. The jar itself speaks of extravagance. Most of the witnesses are astounded when she breaks the jar rather than dispense a little amount of it needed for such a simple gesture. Destroying it indicates that rather than hold anything back, she intends to allow the entire content of fragrant oil to flow over Jesus' head. The aroma of the oil saturates our Savior and the upper room where it happens. The fragrance fills the air with a bouquet of splendor which most of the disciples and close followers of Jesus have rarely experienced. The oil drips from his head to his beard to his shoulders, down his body to his feet. This anonymous anointing woman comes to Jesus during the last week of his life. She probably has witnessed his entrance into Jerusalem like a pauper king acclaimed with cries of Hosanna. Like everyone else in Jerusalem, she has probably seen his public display of anger and actions turning tables over in the temple. She knows of his cleansing the temple with infuriated authorities watching on. She has heard his retorts in the parable of the wicked tenants and his critique of the pretentious scribes. By the time Jesus is reclining at the table with Simon and friends, the air around him is permeated with an aura of danger and death. All who have heard him and seen him in this week have understood that the murderous tenants of Jesus' parable have their real-life counterparts among Jerusalem's power elite who are plotting his death. She, like the others, can sense the sharpening of swords. She, like the others, can hear the nails pounding outside the city gates as his cross on Calvary is being constructed for his execution. 
At least three times, Jesus told his disciples that he would suffer and die, only to see how they avoided facing that reality. During the final week of his life, Judas sells him out for 30 pieces of silver. And except for John, who comes to the foot of the cross with the women, the other 10 run and hide, and Peter openly denies even knowing who he was. But during these last days of life, when danger is in the air and the powerful are planning his demise, this one anonymous woman gives her all in all, gives her extravagant gesture of faith and love to Jesus. Often, the telling of this story focuses on the complaint that rises at the table about the waste and Jesus' response that she is preparing him for his death. Rarely do we emphasize the anointing as a symbolic statement that Jesus is the Christ, a title which literally means the anointed one. She does not make this gesture while Jesus is at the height of his power and popularity, when crowds are flocking around him, or even as part of the cheering crowds as he entered Jerusalem. She anoints him as his fate is becoming ever more obvious. When fickle crowds are starting to blow with the winds of change and people are trending toward crucifixion and jealous jeers will soon be crying, crucify him, crucify him. That's the moment she chooses. Jesus looks at her and says what is obvious to at least two people in the room. He acknowledges that she is preparing him for death. The anonymous anointing woman is the counterpoint to all of the other disciples, all of the other people who refuse to believe Jesus' message. With one extravagant gesture, she professes her faith that he, the vulnerable prophet, the healer of all, who is surely about to die, is indeed God's anointed one, God's Messiah. By pouring oil over him, she demonstrates her faith in action. She shows everyone that God is working through this man who has consistently taught that love is the only law of life. Jesus is caught between joy and pain. And this woman simply and meaningfully enters this moment, enters his space, and loves him. She has given all, he has given all of his love to everyone around him, all of his brothers and sisters. He has shown nothing, nothing but love for God's children, everyone. And she gets this as she pours her riches all over Jesus. She demonstrates that love poured out by the Son of God needs to be reciprocated in love poured out for him. She shows that wealth is worthless unless it is given away. She shows that God is not revealed through human power, but through the spirit of love given to others. This anointing woman, this anonymous woman, is the first of all the women who will stand by Jesus through his crucifixion and his resurrection as she expresses her faith and faithfulness in a gesture of love that goes so far beyond human proclamation that we are left speechless. She shares Jesus' own faith in humanity, and she shows us all that God is love in a passion which stands infinitely beyond all insults from us. Do you know a follower of Jesus with such a gentle 
and tender love as this. Do you know anyone like that? Are you a follower like this? Do you follow and care for Jesus as he has cared for you? Do you love him that same way as he extends extravagant love? Do you give it back? In our journey back to love, I implore you, I implore each one of us to be like the anonymous anointing woman. On our journey back to love, act as she has acted. Rather than follow or focus on how much we fail when we look in the mirror, all of the betrayers, all of the deniers, all of the untrusty, all of the fallen and the fearful, I pray that this anonymous anointing woman becomes our teacher, the one who shows us how to love and how to live our faith in a way that goes far beyond human understanding. But I will warn you, to be like her can cost you everything. But isn't that the meaning and the message of Holy Week?